So embracing, embracing AI and chain AI in the hype worlds of today has a lot of consequences. I believe that the CEOs, most of them, they, they have a good understanding, but I believe that they have not necessarily, because of their background, all the periphery of all the constraints that will come with that. I, uh, you, you mentioned globalization there. Um, it's an interesting topic. So I was having a meeting um, a couple of weeks ago with a, a senior member of the UK government, mm -hmm. and they mentioned that um, there was a move um, everywhere across every country about deglobalization, that uh, every sovereign nation is now worried about um, resources and they're starting to bring everything back in. So over the last 25, 30 years, we had a, a period of globalization, run your services from anywhere, do anything anywhere. Um, are you starting to see customers actually taking data sovereignty? Um, worrying about where their, their, their services are performed? Is, is that now, are we starting to see a turn in how customers are thinking? Or is it, is it not got to that stage yet? So sovereignty is a key topic uh, on which I've been working. So sovereignty, trust and security are key topics on which I'm working deeply for the past six years. Uh, and I have encouraged, by the way, Hewlett Packard Enterprise to have a look at uh, all the cybersecurity schemas on a the AI acts when we design products and solutions, because yes, I do believe that this is back um, this is not back uh, only because of COVID and that uh, people realized that uh, s they could suffer from not having some goods, simply some goods. In this world that was fully digital, people, uh, if you cannot have sugar or if you cannot have, uh, uh, you know, uh, toilet, paper. Wheat yeah. or to <laughs> toilet paper, you know, what is it about? Mm -hmm. We have an issue. So, it, so this pandemic has been driving the people more than ever to think back about the concept of supply chain. And uh, when you think about the back about the concept of supply chain, of course, IT is there because uh, quite everything is digitized today. Okay? So we need to think about a, st a government, a state, a sensitive industry. They have to think how this IT is manufactured, where it has been manufactured. Are there risks because it was made, I don't know in which country, and if I want to comply with the cybersecurity laws that are in, in uh, the UK or in France or everywhere, I need to comply. I need to know. I need to have traceability. I need to know where it's coming from. I need to know if it has been built by this kind of people or this kind of people and so on. So, yes, it's back. It is back. And I tell you, the geopolitical uncertainty, as we call it, that we have seen uh, in uh, Europe uh, with uh, what is happening on the, the, on the other side and uh, in Asia uh, are consistently uh, bringing back this sovereignty topic. Now, what is happening is that you have uh, governments and or groups of governments who are realizing that what I call the digital economy, and this is the article I wrote uh, two years ago, one dollar of a server that you, are, that, uh, you, you, you purchase to HPE, uh, if you build your cloud provider, will uh, result in five dollars of IaaS pass services, of thirteen dollars of um, of uh, of cloud services, and between sixty and two hundred dollars of digital economy, meaning services in the society that are fully digital thanks to your cloud services. So you can imagine how much important it is with this di digitization that you control this IT end to end. It is back. We have cybersecurity schemas and the frameworks everywhere now in the world. Uh, on our side, uh, I am uh, really uh, pushing uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise.